All right, we're here. The Scrap Expo 2022. I got my buddy Drake here and uh, from Rematter, and I'm just, we've been talking about doing this, sitting down, and we finally got it. We finally got the window of time. It both worked for both of us, so let's make it happen, Captain. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me here. Excited to be here. Scrap Expo has been pretty good so far. Day it's two. Been good to you? Good. Yeah, yeah, good so far. Um, met a lot of companies, so. You know, all, all the all the work you know is, is after the convention and following up with people exactly. and whatnot. But yeah, really exciting to see all the different equipment and stuff too that you don't see at other shows. So. Yeah, well, and be able to see it like work live as it's kind of like a different component that that is that this show brought, and I think it kind of brought out some more people that may not have can't, would would go to an Isri show or whatever. And I think the cost, uh, you know, to attend the show enables like you know a, a broader landscape of people to actually. Okay, from a profitability, affordability standpoint, like we can go attend that show. Totally, yeah. Also, I didn't realize too. Someone was saying that Louisville is like six or seven hours of like sixty percent of the U.S. population. So pretty, yeah. pretty central in terms no, of people I, getting here. And I didn't realize that either until I was talking to Jim Keefe, and, he, and I was like, "Why Louisville out of all places?" <laughs> yeah. And he's like, and he kind of broke down the math for me. I was like, "Okay, it makes sense. Like, yeah, that's good. That's a fair reason." Yeah. Yeah, totally. You guys been doing have any fun after after the show? You guys, what you guys been doing? Anything? Anything? Exciting. Yeah, I mean, just meet exploring Louisville. Yeah, not not too much. Yeah. Um, yeah, mostly just meeting up with you know some some current and uh, you know prospective customers, which is always good. But we're actually headed up to the commodities roundtable uh, later today after yeah. after the show here. I'll be up there. I'm going to leave tomorrow morning early and get up perfect. there and yeah, yeah, yeah. go to Chicago. And Chicago's a pretty fun city as well. Yeah, I, yeah. I enjoy that up there. I'm excited. I've, I've never actually been to Chicago before, oh, so really? this will be my first time going there. And uh, it's it's a good it's a good city. It's it's pretty fun. Yeah, that, I think that commodities roundtable kicked off today, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. have we have one of our, our guys going up and, and setting up having another booth up there. Oh, you guys so. have a booth up there? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've just found all the basically all the shows are the the best way to to meet people and you know share more about our product and stuff. Mostly because I mean people are so busy day to day and yeah. you know. Even they're, if they're busy, a, like operating and doing, and like they're in their own, they're in their business, like grinding away. Totally, yeah. So yeah. it's always always good to catch people in a good headspace when they're, you know, evaluating like new equipment, new programs, and, and things that they can be doing different to potentially improve their their operation. One hundred percent. So tell me, I mean, give me the rundown. Like, what do you guys do? Yeah. So myself and my two co-founders, we started Rematter about two and a half years ago. So the, the backstory on it, um, we all three of us were students at uh, Stanford University out in California. Um, one of my co-founders, our, our co-founder and CEO, Wyatt, did an internship through this clean tech accelerator on campus. Yeah. Got pretty interested in industrial recycling. And uh, our senior year, we were in a product design class looking at software and industrial spaces. And uh -huh. we were all pretty interested in recycling, but we didn't know too much about it. I think like, like most people, and you know, hear you guys talk about it a lot, like the education of scrap industry. I think yeah. most people think of recycling as like blue bin residential recycling and, you know, you know, bottles and cans here or there. So we just cold called a bunch of scrap yards in the, the Bay Area, um, all the way up, you know, to these like really large enterprise companies down in the mom and pop operators and just sat behind skill operators, dispatchers, people on the yard, listened yeah. to the way that they used their software and interacted. A lot of pen and paper. Um, you know, a lot of potential inefficiencies and problems with their existing programs and felt like there was a synergy there uh, for us to build something new. So working on it part time, COVID hit March 2020, we were all ready to graduate. Okay. So moved into this like crappy little apartment near uh -huh. San Francisco and built out our uh, bin tracking and dispatch product first. Nice. So started there and now we've evolved into doing scale ticketing, was, inventory management, so sales. Who, who was your first customer? Like. Yeah, our very first customer, uh, I think that the trophy goes to Alan Finch of Mayflower Metals. He, he was the very first customer user of, uh, of the program. We reached out on LinkedIn and I mean, we, we looking back now, we barely had a, a product at that point. Like uh -huh. it was a very early iteration of it. And, um, you know, we were solving a problem for him though of helping you know, manage his, his bin tracking operations. So we're, we're forever grateful for uh, him taking a risk I, on dude, I always love to ask, like, yeah. you know, if you start <laughs> something new, like from scratch, is like, who was the first one? Because it's like, there's always gotta be that one guy or gal that like takes the risk like all right let's see what you can do you know like gives you a shot and so there's always like i always think there's like always holds like a special a place in totally business, you know? totally yeah he was our first customer on dispatch and then um andrew bomaker out in nebraska was the first guy to use our uh, our scale our scale ticketing product and yeah um, yeah i mean especially with software i mean it's like any business it's such a it's such an iterative process that the only way that you improve is by having people give you feedback, but you know you need those people who are willing to like yeah. take, take a dive on you know, an early version of the product to actually help progress it forward. Yeah. What's been like the biggest challenge like for you guys trying to develop that this 
Like it's because it's, it's a pretty unique piece of software that that every every recycling facility has a, a purchasing software, right? A dispatch software. And what's been the kind of the the, the challenge you I guess maybe didn't expect when building this building this business out? Yeah, totally. So I think on the the bin tracking and dispatch side, it's yeah. a very I think it's a, a pretty narrowly scoped problem in terms of. You have a bunch of different size containers. They're out at commercial accounts. You're dispatching out drivers. It, it, to us, it was like a pretty linear way to build a, a software yeah. um, to, to solve that. As we started getting into more of the transactional piece of like scale ticketing, inventory management, sales, the level of depth and nuance is was a lot higher than we originally anticipated. And yeah. especially as we talked to different yards of each size, people do their, their inventory management sli slightly differently. They do their accounting slightly differently. And like those little, differences in how people operate which you know are, are working great for them yeah as a software provider that's trying to be you know a one-fit solution you have to figure out a way to be flexible enough to adapt to e each operation and give them like an opportunity to kind of give you feedback and like dial it all the way in like figure out what that need all the way is right totally yeah and, and the line we kind of glommed onto early is like we're not a custom software but we're customizable and we really looked at it as um you know, basically just having like a, a litany of settings as a way for people to customize the way that their their interface looks and the way that, you know, they, they interact with uh, with the, the product is super important. Like a, a really specific example is uh, as a part of our dispatch product, uh -huh. in our mobile app, drivers have the ability to create their own, own jobs and dispatch runs. Yeah. So some yards loved it because they have guys running on the weekends or, or night shifts when there's not necessarily a dispatcher who's like giving them, giving them run schedules. Yeah. So they need to create their own runs. Other yards are like, there's no way in hell I want my drivers creating runs. Like, you know, we have a very structured process, but yeah. but they're using the same software. So you need to build in flexibility where they where can. Where you uh, can either have like a dispatch manager or a driver, like you kind of, it's, it's a, so what's been like the, the, the coolest thing about, like since you've started the business and you start, built the software, like what's been like the most like enjoyable piece of it or like what, like what, do you, what makes you smile about doing what you're doing? Yeah, so I mean, it's it's been such an incredible journey, and even reflecting back on just like looking at early iterations of the product and how far it's come, like yeah. it's it's almost unrecognizable. And hopefully, you know, we're saying that again, you know, two years out, that you know, it's just gotten this much better since. I think I think the most enjoyable part, though, honestly, has been we've had the opportunity to go on so many different sites, like physically to to different scrapyards, and you know, install the product train people on how to use it and then actually seeing it live is, yeah. is super cool. I think there's a certain level of, you know, pride that comes with like you've you've built something completely from scratch and then you see people utilizing it hours yeah. hours and hours a day. It's saving them time on a process where they were like previously, you know, doing everything on, on pen and paper. Well, you're, so. you're sitting there watching somebody run their whole business with something that you built. Totally. Yeah. Like, it's, that's awesome. It's right? like the best feeling in the world. <laughs> yeah. and nothing and the industry is just so cool, I think, especially as we've immersed ourselves in it more. We're like we're trying to recruit more of our friends in it and stuff. Cause I think yeah. like like I was saying earlier, I think this part of recycling is just, it, it's its unknown by such a huge part of the population, but yeah. the, the scale at which materials are, are being recycled, I, I think people don't fully understand. The amount of money understand. being exchanged, like people don't understand like the, the, the real dollars that are being exchanged daily, right? Like between customers and consumers. And I mean, so like, the and I think, I feel like the industry as a whole, and I was talking to Sean Davidson, yep. you know, yesterday, I mean, there's a still a lot of like tech opportunities because it is it's not truly an old school like people kind of you know kind of poo poo the re recycling industry in a, in a lot of ways but there's been a lot of tech innovation in the last 10 years that's really like pushed it forward you know and i and i feel like what you guys are doing is, is similar like it, you guys fit in that kind of niche where you know that small mom and pop excel you know operator needs that next organization level right like to, to build their business totally yeah and I mean I think one of the things from a product standpoint that have been the most surprising because um, you know obviously like we're doing demos and product walkthroughs and mm -hmm. I, I think you know most people have some some semblance of like a purchasing system so yeah you know there, there are certain areas where you know I, I think we're really good on but what one of the things that's that's pretty different is we have uh, mobile apps for like mobile purchasing on the go or printing off inventory tags on the yard and I, I think it's, it, I think the phone and especially like across all levels of like tech comfort, yeah. being able to run more of your operation on your phone and create contracts, send contracts, I, I think is really powerful. And that's something that I don't think people, as we onboard them, like fully like understand during the demo, but then they, 
it's like the most used part of the product. So that's one of the things that my, my mind sh has shifted a little bit as we've just brought more people on and see how they use it. Yeah. So how many, I mean, I mean, how many people now do you guys have in the, in your organization, your company? Yeah. So we're, we're, uh, about 15 people so that's far. Awesome. Yeah. So mostly, mostly engineers, which like, you know, makes sense for uh, yeah, a yeah. software startup. And we, we brought on our first couple, uh, sales folks and, um, customer success, uh, a couple months ago, just as we've been bringing on more yards. We need uh -huh. to, Honestly, like you gotta be we, able to support it, right? You have yeah. to, yeah. And I think customer service is an area like you just you never can sacrifice on that. Um, uh -huh. Even for like a software where a lot of things are self-service, like there's a lot of users, you know, at these yards who like you know they might not have a, a phone outside of like the one that work issues them and whatnot. And it's important to provide that that ongoing support. Definitely. I will say, like, just me, you know, when we when we were, I don't know, I think one two thousand and five. Mm -hmm. We were still entering, manually entering, like, handwritten purchase tickets into QuickBooks, right? Sure. And into, like, an Excel sheet. And so, and we kind of had this kind of wonky dispatch deal. And the biggest difference in our business that helped us organize it was actually implementing a software that was built for the, the scrap industry, right? And I, can, and, I, and I say this, like, whether it's your business or in a, another competing software or whatever, I mean, I like you, like we do, we do some business, but ultimately, like I tell people this all the time, like if you want to really change your business, from, if you're a small guy just trying to get to the next level, if you can get a software that can combine your dispatches and your purchases and just help you from an, on an organizational level, you won't, it's hard for me to tell you how much of a difference that makes in your business. It's yeah, crucial. Like, to totally. It's for, it, to take the next step, you have to do it. And, and, and it's a, and it's, it can be an expensive, bullet to, to eat but the the payoff is 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 exponential totally yeah and i mean especially for you know owner operators it's like time spent doing paperwork and compliance it's mm -hmm. like i mean you, you have to do it but it, it, it's a necessary evil and if you can yeah. cut you know that that time out of your day you can spend it focused on you know calling new accounts like checking up it's on existing efficiency accounts. thing right? totally like, yeah do you want i mean it's the difference between like a 1986 excavator <laughs> and a 2022 excavator right like it's it's gonna be more efficient it's gonna be easier on diesel like it's there's just it, it's an efficiency game right totally and yeah. i think that's where you know finding the right software finding the right you know stuff that fits with your within your business within your budget is it, it just creates efficiencies that you you might not you you'll, you would never realize until you actually implement it yeah for sure and it's interesting too um one of the things that we've noticed you know especially since like so so much of the business is physical software can kind of feel like this like you know you, you can't touch it you can't feel it. Yeah. it's not metal it's not uh you know machinery and you know even like looking at some of the machines out there where you know you can like move your attachments you know from like a magnet to a grapple like a, a couple minutes quicker like people are willing to invest a lot of money to do that yeah and it's like well, your back office like is also an area that's like worth investing, you know, uh -huh. time, time, and energy into. Yeah, exactly. And I think, and I, and I, and that's why I, I wanted to have this conversation is because, like, I'm not gonna here to bullshit anybody. Like, I'm just gonna tell you what's worked for me. And I say, like, if you can get efficient on the office space side, like, it's gonna create as much opportunity or more as you are if you, you get efficient on the equipment side. Totally. So, I, mean, I think you make a pretty good point there. Yeah. No. And it's yeah. It's 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 just so fun. Like the the industry is is really. It's really awesome, and I mean, like you said earlier, I think there's a lot of like good tailwinds, like technology-wise, where yeah. technology doesn't need to be scary. Like ultimately, it's it's there to like make your life easier and grow your business. Like that, those should be like the two functions of exactly. of any pro whether it's like you know you're talking about Sean earlier, like pricing data. You know, that's yeah. like a great example of <laughs> you know something. Hundred percent. And our industry, like, like it's only gonna grow. And I think like for like young people that are trying to decide like what they want to do, whatever whatever that is, whatever that is, like go to college, not this that become a software engineer, become an equipment operator, whatever, like you need to take a hard look at the recycling industry because I, I feel like there's a t ton of opportunity, but you said there's a ton of tailwind that's coming because people are realizing that the resources are only like finite, right? Like it's, there's, it's it, at some point, like you you have to reuse everything. Right? Totally, totally. And the more you can start to figure that out, like it's, it's, a, it's, it's a growing industry and there's going to be a ton of opportunity. Yeah, I completely agree. I'm mean, like an anecdotally too, like from talking to like, you know, friends from school and like in college study like environmental sciences and stuff like, yeah. you know, focused in recycling. It seems like so much of the like higher education, it's focused on waste. Like it's yeah. not really touching industrial recycling, which, you know, I think if, if more people like knew about it, there, there would be, you know, more, 
interest and, and you know, higher levels of recruitment. But yeah, I, I agree. That's why it's been super fun. Like at a lot of the, you know, shows like this and the Israel events, like seeing all or like connecting with a lot of the, like young buyers and traders and, you know, yeah. you know, sons and daughters of, of owners who are like coming up in the business because uh-huh. it's super cool because it's like, I mean, I, I, I've listened to podcasts where you've talked about that story of like bridging the gap of like how, the, how your parents operated to continuing that legacy, yeah. but then also like, you know, putting your touch on it and, and, and stuff. Then, and yeah, allowing the, the, next, the next generation, if they want to do it, great. If not, then will somebody else do it, you know? Like, yeah. But yeah, it's, you know, you being able to kind of put your, your touch on it from an operator standpoint, say, okay, we used to run the 1986 excavator, and yeah. now we run the 22, and like this is the difference that's made in our business, so. I'm stoked, man. I'm, I, I look forward to seeing you in Chicago again. We'll yeah, get, we'll definitely. Catch up and drink a beer and go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Brad. Right, appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate <laughs> you.